The Netra, Old Navajo Land. This is our holy land, a place where the Navajo belief and value system of Tsa'a, Nagay, Bik, and Hajjan begins in prayer and song. We believe that we've been here since the beginning of time, not in this human form, but in a spiritual form. This world that we're living in now is called the fifth world, the changing world or glittering world. Back then, we referred to ourselves as the wind or air spirited people. We had wings so we could fly from one world to another. The first world was a black world. The second world was a blue world. The third world was a yellow world. The fourth world was a white world. And this is the fifth world. It's a combination of all those beautiful colors. The holy people, the yin, the ne'e, hashche tke'e, hashche jine, do na da sa, talking God, black God, and others came to greet the wind-spirited people. They created first man and first women out of two ears of corn, our most ancient ancestors. So, <laughs> Ginas Ado le Dalia. A net the hone in the hot nago, do no selco, sa. Cate net nizit, no holds this do le, get net do lada. Do a do ne any clean, no sel. Teaches that do jato, so on a way big a hozon be. Had a dot little cohozon, not a dot le. Oh, God, Bahal Jews, a scare, Suzette. Nicky Yash care, nay, yet, Nesgane. Do Trubaschene, Yichigo, Yato, Nukatkihia, Elskonkone Oh, Hajashi, Yato, Nabis Kate, yeah, Tana Sleek or Takai, Nabis Kate, Dole. Dana, there, now Sazbet Hon eat in there. Coja has eat Nago, but Sanitna Sato Datina, Do, and he don't Sato Datina. Boran Kinali, La, Cadets aren't that in there. Do nana sa, the net at all left. The Navajos built stone masonry dwellings called Pueblitos throughout the Netra. Located on cliffs, they were in the same style as those of the Anasazi. During the 1700s, Many Pueblo people sought refuge from the Spanish by joining Navajo people in the Netra. This is where the four original clans of the Navajos originated. The modern Hopis, Zunis, and Pueblo Indians are direct descendants of the Anasazi. The Tkapanha clan of the Navajo originated from Taos, New Mexico. It translates to the Edgewater people. The Maedej Gijni clan is translated to the Coyote Passway people who originated from Hamas Pueblo. These historical events took place long before the arrival of the conquistadors. Now let me ask you this. Are the Navajos direct descendants of the Anasazi, Fremonts, Hohokam, and others? Think about it. Yat e! Welcome to Canyon de Shea National Monument. Leon Skyhorse Thomas Yin Shea. Kia Ani N Shle. Tachi Ni Bashish Chin. Mai Dej Gijni Dasha Che. Katna Zani Dasha Nala. I will take you through Canyon de Shea and explore the history and culture of the Anasazi, Hopi, and Navajo people. The Navajos call this canyon Sayit, which means Rock Canyon, 
On one of the old Spanish maps dated 1778, they referred to this canyon as the Cheyet. When the United States government claimed this area, they call it the Shea. We will stop at some of the major ruins and points of interest, so come along. The Anasazi have occupied this canyon for over 1,000 years. They basically grew corn, squash, beans, and cotton. These people were very short, five feet and under. They lived to between 40 and 50 years of age. Trade items such as parrot and macaw feathers from central Mexico and South America were found in the canyon along with abalone shell from the Pacific Ocean and turquoise, which was also found in abundance. By the 1300s, the Anasazi abandoned their homes throughout the Southwest, including Mesa Verde, Chaco Canyon, and Monument Valley. Kwa <laughs> Hopi Indians were in and around Canyon de Shea between 1300 and 1600 AD. No permanent structures of the Hopi have ever been found. Only Hopi pottery, baskets, burials, and a few rock art sites. The Navajos came into this area during the early 1600s. Vasquez de Coronado arrived in the southwest in July of 1540 AD. He was the first of many Spanish that brought destruction, forced baptism, and warfare with the Navajo and other Native American tribes. In January of 1805, Lieutenant Antonio Nabana led over 300 Spanish soldiers up from Old Mexico in retaliation against Navajo raids into the Rio Grande area. The Navajo men were away at the time hunting up in the Lakotchikai Mountains. As the Spanish soldiers were passing this ledge, a Navajo woman began to shout down at the soldiers. The Navajo women knew the Spanish language because she had been a slave. The soldiers stopped, looked up, and immediately began to climb the steep talus. <laughs> The Spanish soldier began to argue with the Navajo women as they started to fight with one another. As they struggled, they both slipped and fell to their deaths. The Navajos refused to surrender. The soldiers followed the rim of the canyon and immediately began to fire their bullets into the small cave. One of the Navajo men covered himself up with the dead bodies. As night fell, he slipped away. That's how we get the story from the Navajo's point of view. We also get the story from the report that was filed in Santa Fe by Lieutenant Antonio Nabana. He said the following morning, the soldiers could still hear noise coming from the cave. 
so they continue firing their bullets into the cave. Sometime during the late afternoon, the noise stopped, so they entered the cave. Inside they found the bodies of 115 men, women, and children. This cave is known as Massacre Cave. If you look very closely at the Spanish mural, you can see two white dots above the horse riders. These represent the sun and the two days of fighting. Each year we welcome thousands of visitors here to beautiful Canyon de Shade. It's our opportunity to share the canyon through Navajo eyes. Good morning. Okay, seven five feet up on the small ledge are some of the most beautiful pictographs created by the Anasazi and Navajo. The white color pictograph is a deer with its antlers sticking upward. The zigzag line represents water ripples or sound waves. The circles, brown rainbow, and human colored designs were made by the Anasazi. The antelope and horses were made by a Navajo man by the name of the Beh Yaja Lila Sheep. This was done sometime around the 1830s. Because of the antelope, we call this antelope house ruin. The Anasazi migrated from the four cardinal directions, Mesa Verde, Chaco Canyon, Kienta, and other places near and far. They left this migration symbol on the sandstone wall, the reverse swastika symbol, which represents four directions. It was also a welcome sign. If one was traveling through this area and they saw the symbol, it was a place where they could eat, trade, and sleep. You can also find a symbol on older Navajo rugs. These rugs were woven during the late 1800s and early 1900s. Thank you very much. Enjoy the canyon. This land was part of Mexico at one time. The Mexican government broke away from Spain in 1821. The Spanish introduced horses, cattle, sheep, and goats to the southwest. They did not want the Navajos to obtain horses because of mobility and swiftness that might be used against them and others. El sol aún sigue fuerte y los días ya más cortos. Ya pronto saldré para Santa Fe para vender los caballos. Esposo mío, eres un buen hombre. Has trabajado mucho por nosotros. Estoy muy contenta. Tendremos suficiente alimento este invierno. ¿Qué qué? ¿Pero qué has dicho? No te muevas. Enseguida me arreglo contigo. Navajo. Navajo. Devuelvan esos animales. A mí me pertenecen. Van a pagar por esto, ya verán. According to the Spanish military archives, the Navajos constantly raided the Rio Grande area in retaliation against Navajo slave raids into Denetra. The United States government claimed this area in 1846. They built the fort 60 miles east of Canyon de Shea in 1851. The fort was called Fort Defiance. During the 1800s, there were a lot of wars that took place among the tribes surrounding the Navajo. The Navajos fought against the Plains Indians such as the Kiowa, Pawnee, Comanche, Shoshone, Utes, and the Paiutes, and they fought with half of the tribes in the state of Arizona, along with the Pueblo Indians living along the Rio Grande River. One particular incident took place with the Ute Indians in January of 1858. 
The Ute Indians from Colorado and Utah came through the Lukochukai Mountains heavily armed with rifles and ammunition, which they obtained from the Anglo traders, miners, homesteaders, and Mormons. They surprised a small group of Navajos who were holding a winter ceremony called the Yebiche. The Utes killed a few of the Navajos who were dressed in full ceremonial regalia, suddenly attacking on horseback with guns, spears, and other arms. They came down here for anything of value, women, children, and livestock. A second battle occurred within Canyon del Murto, where eight Utes and three Navajos were killed. The United States soldiers were in the area at the time. By the 1860s, one-third of the Navajo people were taken as slaves by the Mexicans, Utes, Apaches, and other neighboring tribes. The Navajos retaliated by striking the Pueblo and Mexican settlements along the Rio Grande River. The United States government grew tired of the complaints and ordered the Navajos to surrender to the nearest fort by July 20th of 1863. The sun rose and the sun set that day, and not one Navajo came in to surrender. Shortly thereafter, the United States government soldiers began to ravage the countryside. More and more Navajos began to flee from the area. Some fled into the state of Utah as others made their way towards the Grand Canyon while some fled to southern Arizona and were accepted by small bands of Apaches. A large number of Navajos decided to resist the United States government. They traveled 40 miles to the north and cut down four 80-foot ponderosa pine trees, then hauled them down by hand and by horse to Canyon de Chez. They placed these poles up against the northeast side of what we call Tsela, the Navajo Fortress Rock, and all through the summer of 1863, the Navajos hauled tons and tons of wood, yucca fiber for ropes, flint for arrowheads, and their personal belongings to the fortress in the sky. In October, they began to haul loads of corn, squash, melons, peaches, and other commodities to the fortress. By November, there were over 300 Navajos living on top of the Navajo Fortress Rock. General James Carlton, the military commander of the New Mexico Territory ordered Colonel Kit Carson into Canyon de Chez to round up the Navajo. Soldiers of the United States government entered the canyon in January of 1864. The Navajo were curious about the new people. Many of them have never seen a person with white skin. The soldiers passed the Navajo Fortress Rock and went down to the mouth of the canyon, where the Cottonwood Campground is now located. Four days later, the soldiers appeared on the rim of the canyon and saw hundreds of Navajos up on top of the Navajo Fortress Rock. Using their rifles, they opened fire as the Navajos scattered about, but they soon realized they were too far away to do much harm. Once again, the Navajos were safe. In the meantime, the soldiers began to destroy all the hogans and crops of corn, squash, melons, along with over 5,000 orchard trees that grew in the canyon. The snow began to melt in February and March of 1864. The people began to worry about their food and water supply. Everyone kept still in order to save their energy so they wouldn't become dehydrated. They began to wonder if their fortress would become their tomb as they saw the cool water flowing at the bottom of the canyon floor. Day after day, they watched as the water ran next to the rock projecting out 125 feet above the canyon floor. At night, under a full moon in the month of March, the Navajos made a human chain that stretched over 600 feet long down to the edge of the cliff above the water. The people carefully lowered their containers to the water below as the soldiers slept nearby. The following morning, after six months on top of the Navajo Fortress Rock and nearly three months of U.S. aggression, the soldiers finally packed up everything and left the canyon. Oh. Men, I ain't no fool, but I feel that this is just the beginning. General Carlton believes that this land is rich in gold. I'm only doing my duty. I hope you understand. Let's move it out.
Among all my endeavors since my arrival here, there has been an effort to brush back the Indians. There is no doubt but that the northern portion of the country of the Navajo is very rich in the precious metals, particularly in gold. First U.S. government rations of flour, beef, salt, and other foreign commodities were given to the Navajo at Fort Defiance and Fort Wingate. Thousands of men, women, and children were forced to march the 400 miles east of Canyon de Chez to a place the Navajo called Huelte. The Spanish called it Bosque Redondo, and the American government called it Fort Sumner. The march to Huelte is now known as the Navajo's Long Walk. The United States government counted over 11,000 Navajos who made it to Fort Sumner. All along the way, hundreds of people either died of sickness or were taken as slaves by other Indian tribes or by the Mexicans. Four years later, General William T. Sherman, the famous general who burned down Atlanta during the Civil War, arrived at Fort Sumner. After four days of intense negotiations with U.S. government officials, Barbancito, Manolito, and others signed a 19th known treaty with the Spanish, Mexican, and American governments on June 1st of 1868. Article 1 established a first reservation, which was 3.5 million acres of land. Canyon de Chez was included. The Navajos were released 18 days later from Fort Sumner and were freely escorted back to Fort Defiance and Canyon de Chez. There are many songs, stories, chants, and prayers that were given to the Navajo by the holy people. The holy people, the yin, the ne'e, are part of the sun, moon, clouds, rocks, trees, and all living elements surrounding us. Just being in the canyon, you can feel a strong spiritual presence. In 1882, Colonel James S. Stevenson led an archaeological survey team into Canyon del Murto. The team consisted of scientists, artists, and photographers financed by the Smithsonian Bureau of American Ethnology. They discovered two naturally mummified bodies in Mummy Cave, the largest ruin in the canyon. Because of this find, Colonel James S. Stevenson documented the Northern Canyon as Canyon de los Muertos. The White House ruin is the most famous ruin within the National Monument. It is estimated that at least 60 rooms existed here at one time. The first Anglo man to see the site was a military expedition documented by Lieutenant James A. Simpson in 1849. He referred to this site as Casablanca, the White House, because of the white gypsum plaster on the upper floor of the ruin. Spider Rock is the holiest place in the canyon. This is the place where the hero twins, Monster Slayer and Child Born of Water, came to visit Spider Woman. They were given special songs and weapons for their journey to visit their father, the sun. It is also the place where Spider Woman taught the Navajos how to weave. Our ancestors who have walked this corn pollen road of life have returned to the earth. They are part of the trees, rivers, canyons, and mountains, as well as the entire universe. We are the children of the holy people. We are just passing through this world. Respect yourself and your relatives, as well as Mother Earth and Father Sky. May you walk in beauty. Say yeah, 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 the 
手你歌，哦哦哦哦，谁耶耶耶？你手你歌，哦哦哦哦哦，谁耶耶耶？你手你歌，哦哦，伊阿那伊尼乌喂，谁耶耶耶？你手你歌，哦哦哦哦。Say yeah yeah yeah, me show me go oh 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 oh. Say yeah yeah yeah, me show me go oh 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 oh. He on a hini owe. Say yeah yeah yeah, me show me go oh 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 oh.